My name is Mark, a recording angel. I've been observing this earth since the dawn of creation. The Most High has asked me to share my recordings with you. The following are my records of humans during the fascinating times when the desire of ages, Jesus the Messiah, came to this earth. And they're collected in this book, Victory of the Warrior King, the Story of the Life of Jesus. If today's recording contains situations which might be uncomfortable for younger listeners, I will mark the video with the words parental guidance recommended. Andrew, village of Nain. Dawn was just streaking the sky when Andrew returned to the house, carrying the large jug of water. Hauling water was women's work, but since his father had died, his mother had seemed so fragile that Andrew just made it a point to go to the well early in the morning before she had a chance to, and she gratefully allowed it. This morning, as he approached the house, he saw her already baking the flat loaves of bread in the rounded mud-brick oven in the courtyard. You're up early, he said. Already you've got the bread baking. I'm excited, she said with a smile. Oh? It had been a long time since he'd seen a sparkle in his mother's eye. What's happening? Yeshua from Nazareth is coming through here today. I've heard so many wonderful things about him. Her son nodded. He too was curious to meet this former carpenter and now itinerant teacher. I'm going to take you to him, she said. I want him to bless you. He is no ordinary young rabbi. Many people are whispering that he is the Messiah. Someday he will be really famous, and you will be able to say that he blessed you when you were young. Perhaps when he throws out the Romans and sets up his government in Jerusalem, he may have a position for you. You never know. It's always good to have connections. And even if nothing else, at least you can tell your children and grandchildren that you heard him speak. Well then, let me feed the animals quickly so that we'll be ready. While Andrew took care of the animals, I watched his mother pack a lunch. Cheese curds, some dried fruit, and the freshly baked flatbread. Their chores done, the mother and son headed for the edge of town. Two hills fairly close together provided a perfect natural amphitheater. They wanted to find a good place to sit where they could hear and hopefully approach the teacher and ask his blessing. When they arrived, what they saw disheartened them. Look, mother, hundreds of people have gotten here ahead of us. Now we'll never get to talk to the teacher. Yes, we will she replied with a determined jut to her jaw. Andrew grinned. When his mother got that look on her face, she always figured out a way to do what she wanted, no matter who opposed her. Andrew held her elbow protectively as they pressed through the crowd. He didn't want her to get lost. The teacher sat on a large rock at the center. Only a few more feet, and they could talk to him. The knot of men who always seemed to be around him now was the only thing between the young teacher and Andrew's determined mother. Rabbi, she called. Rabbi, please, bless my son. Yeshua turned to see where the request was coming from, but his disciples blocked his view. Stop it, hissed one of the bearded men at mother. Can't you see he's more important things to do? Be silent, woman. Sit down. Women these days just don't know their place. And you too, he turned to Andrew. What's your name, boy? Andrew. Well, Andrew, get your mother out of here and sit down. Another disciple smiled at the boy. Don't let his gruffness scare you, he said. His name is Andrew, too. While the two Andrews stared at each other, Mother called out again. Rabbi, Yeshua of Nazareth, please bless my son. The disciple named Andrew frowned. Woman, I told you! But a voice behind him stopped him cold. Andrew, Yeshua said, let the children come to me. Don't chase them away. The kingdom of heaven is going to be made of boys just like this. I told you, Mother said, he's going to have a spot for you in his kingdom. The adult Andrew frowned. I smiled as the younger Andrew wiggled his way through the men to Yeshua's side. The son of the Almighty looked into the boy's eyes, then placed his hand on his shoulder and blessed him. I do have a spot for you in my kingdom, he said, though it may not be exactly what you imagine. Andrew wanted just to sit at his feet and listen all day, but other children and their mothers crowded around. The boy found his mother and helped her over to a good spot on the hillside for hearing and seeing everything that happened.
Andrew, his mother began one day a few weeks later, I hear that Yeshua of Nazareth is going to be near my old childhood home this week. Really? That's a long way from here. We could walk, but we would not be able to get there and back the same day. No, we wouldn't. But perhaps we could stay in my uncle's home overnight. If we leave tomorrow, we can arrive there for the night and then hear the preacher the next day. Perhaps we can even stay that night and head home the next morning. After all, we have not imposed on my uncle's hospitality for many years. A tinge of bitterness crept into her voice. Andrew was oblivious to it, but I was not. I had been recording in her uncle's village for another child when the boy's mother was young, and I remembered how he resented having to care for his nieces when his brother died. He did not treat them well, and married them off as quickly as he was able to, so that someone else would have to support them. She must really want to see Yeshua again to be willing to go there. Andrew, knowing none of this, was delighted. An overnight trip, he shouted. That's wonderful. I will talk to Amos and see if he will take care of our lambs and chickens while we are gone. You know he will do anything for those little cakes you make. He loves your cooking. His family may have more money than us, but his mother doesn't cook as well as you do. Mother laughed. Not all women are the same, she said. We all have talents, but they're different. I'm glad that Amos likes my cakes. Her son smiled. I'll go talk to him right away so that we can get ready to go. She nodded as she gathered some provisions for the journey. Though she would request shelter and a safe place to sleep, she planned to take her own food and ask nothing else from her uncle, even though society expected him to provide all those things. The trip was long, hot, and dusty, but Andrew enjoyed the time spent with his mother. As they chatted away, she told him stories about his father. How did you and father meet? he asked. We met at our wedding, said Mama. I was very young, and though I was too young to be married, my uncle had us betrothed very early on and convinced your father's family that if I came to their home, I would be a better wife having grown up with their son. So we were married very young, and I came to live with him. Weren't you afraid? A little bit. I did not know whether your father was going to be a kind person or a cruel one. He was much older than me, but ever since my parents had died and I had been living with my uncle, I had been very unhappy. I figured it couldn't be any worse than that. So what happened next? I came to live in your father's home, and though he was much older than me, he was very kind. All of his family was kind, and he treated me like the little girl that I was until I was older. Your father was a blessing from God, and I miss him, she said, her voice cracking a little. The boy reached over and squeezed her arm. I know you do, mother. I do too. But I'm glad God gave you a good man. She nodded. It is a much greater blessing to have a good man for a short time than a cruel one for a long time. God has been good to me, and now my greatest blessing is you. Just think, she said to him. Without you, I would have no value at all. Because of you, I was able to stay in the home that your father left us and to keep the sheep and the chickens and continue life in Nain as we have. If I had not had you, Andrew, I would have had to return to my uncle. If that had happened, he would have taken you back, wouldn't he? Andrew inquired. I don't know, but thankfully the Lord sent you, and you're able to inherit your father's property. God is good. God is good, her son echoed. They came over the brow of the hill, and Mother caught her breath. There it is. There's my home, where I lived as a little child. Andrew frowned. Why was your uncle so eager to get rid of you? It looks as if they are well off. He has many more animals than we do, and a vineyard. Yes, he has lots of land. He also owns a few of those little houses over there that he rents to other farmers. Then he could afford to take care of you? Her son protested. Affording was not the problem, but let's not talk of those days. Those days were days of tears for me, but now the Lord has been so good to me, and even though I have lost my husband, I still have you. So let's not think about that. Let's be happy to see Uncle, and perhaps he'll even be happy to see us. The rest of the way did not seem long at all, and soon they were at the doorstep. A servant ushered them in. They were just having a drink of water when Mother's uncle burst into the room. What are you doing here? He demanded. You squandered your husband's money? Now you want to sponge off of me? No, we ask nothing except your hospitality, she replied. We would like to stay tonight, here in your home. Why? Where you going? 
Yeshua of Nazareth is preaching near here. Yeah, I know, the uncle snapped. That man is a nuisance. The servants are always wanting to sneak off and talk to him, and no one wants to get any work done around here. Well, she continued, we have traveled here and wish to go hear him speak tomorrow. If you will let us sleep in your home in safety, that's all we ask. Well, don't expect the servants to wait on your hand and foot. We even brought our own provisions. I expect nothing from you. I know better than that. Her uncle raised his hand and slapped her. You worthless female! Don't you insult me! Andrew drew himself to his full height and stepped in between his great-uncle and his mother. Saying nothing, he just stood there, staring his great-uncle in the face. The man glared, raised his hand again, and then backed away. Perhaps he could sense the guardians clustering around Andrew. All I can say is you're lucky to have that boy. You were worthless as a child, and you'd be worthless as a widow if you didn't have that son. All I can say is you're lucky. Turning, he stomped away. After he disappeared, Mother burst into tears. Andrew tried to comfort her. He's through it, he said. She said, I have no value without you now that your father is gone. But you do have me, Andrew replied. I'll never leave you, Mother, never. Don't worry about the future. Andrew and his mother awoke before dawn and slipped out of the house. It was easier to leave before uncle was up. They sat on the hillside and listened to Yeshua of Nazareth speak. Andrew was delighted. It was as if the teacher had been hiding in the corner listening to their conversation the night before. Everything he said encouraged Andrew and his mother. When Yeshua said, Blessed are you that mourn, for you will be comforted. It especially caught the boy's attention. He hugged his mother. The teacher had not only blessed Andrew, but his mother too. She was just as important. Sure enough, later in his sermon, he talked about what great value God placed on everyone. It was as if he had heard the uncle's cruel words the night before when he declared, God sees even the little sparrow fall, and you have more value than many sparrows. The light came back into mother's eyes. No matter how hard things were, it seemed that Yeshua of Nazareth knew exactly what the pain in her heart was, and he understood. Mother, Andrew announced a few days later, the teacher is going to be not too far from here tomorrow. I've heard he's coming this way. Can we listen to him again? She straightened up, her hand rubbing the small of her back. Andrew, you may go with Jonathan if you like. She said, I will not be able to go this time. Miriam has a fever. I'm going to go help her and care for the baby until she feels better. The next morning, mother was up even before he was. I made some extra bread, she said. I put five of them in your little basket, and there are also two fish. Don't eat everything before noon, or you'll be really hungry later. Andrew laughed. His mother knew him pretty well. It just seemed as if he was always hungry these days, but he had grown much taller. Mother smiled. You have fun. After all, you've worked hard all week and deserve this. I'll see you tonight. The boy started off whistling toward Amos's house. His friend and neighbor was interested in Yeshua of Nazareth, too. Both Andrew and Amos were certain that he was the Messiah, and that he would announce any day now that he would throw the Romans out on their noses. The boys couldn't wait. Yeshua of Nazareth's sermons were everything that Andrew had hoped they would be, he and Amos listened in fascination and were surprised to realize the day was almost over. Apparently, everyone else discovered it about the same time. And suddenly, children all through the crowd started crying to their parents for food. It didn't seem that many people had provided for a lunch, as Mother had. Andrew kept his basket under his outer cloak. While it contained five pieces of bread, that was nothing compared to the needs of the crowd. Down front, Yeshua's disciples started asking, does anyone have any food? Has anyone brought a lunch? The master's hungry. The question made the boy think for a moment. He didn't really want to share his lunch with just anybody, but he would do anything for Yeshua of Nazareth, even give up his food. Pulling it from under his cloak, he said, I have a lunch. It's just bread and fish, but if the master would like it, he's most welcome. The boy looked up at the disciple. You're Andrew, aren't you? The bearded man nodded. Yeah, I'm Andrew, too. We met before. Come with me, young lad, he said, considerably more friendly than the last time they had encountered each other. The boy followed him down to where Yeshua sat on the huge rock. 
And this young lad is willing to give you his lunch, he told his master. Why, thank you, the teacher said. That is very kind of you, Andrew. God loves a cheerful and willing giver, and he will not forget this. Blushing, Andrew looked at his feet. It's only bread and fish. Simple food is quite all right, Yeshua of Nazareth told him. We always ate simply in my home, too. He smiled, and Andrew felt warm all over. Then Yeshua of Nazareth bowed his head and thanked God for the lunch. Andrew expected him to start eating, but instead he began tearing apart the flat rounds of bread. As he pulled pieces off them, there just seemed to be more. And more. He broke the fish and gave some to each disciple. Have the people sit in groups, he commanded, and then take the food to them. The boy couldn't believe his eyes. The more Yeshua broke the food, the more there was. The disciples kept busy carrying basket after basket of bread and fish, and though thousands covered the hillside, five thousand men, not counting the women and children, everyone had enough to eat. Indeed, baskets of it remained left over. Mother was right. Surely this must be the Messiah. Just think how wonderful it would be to have a king in Jerusalem who could multiply food by just breaking it with his hands. No one in Israel would ever go hungry again. Andrew was so excited he could hardly contain himself. He couldn't wait to tell his mother all that had happened. She would be delighted to know she was right. This broadcast has come from the book Victory of the Warrior King by Sally Pearson Dillon, with permission from the Review and Herald Publishing Association. This book and the rest of the series, War of the Ages, can be purchased by going to www. AdventistBookCenter.com or by calling 1-800-765-6955. I'm your narrator, Austin Backus, and this audio project is a gift to you from my free Christian book ministry, RXF 1888. Please visit our website, www.rxf1888.com to request free Christian books for both kids and adults. And join us here again for more stories from Mark the Recording Angel.